We're going to have more on this now with Warren Coates, former monetary expert with the IMF. He joins us now in the studio. Good to have you here. Um, you. E explain to us, I mean, there's a lot of technical issues here, but I want to start with kind of a base case here. Why do we care? Why are we so obsessed with when the Fed cuts back on their stimulus program? Uh, because those who are planning their investments in the market or have investments that might want to uh, rearrange them, uh, make money if they know when that happens. And so you have the, the amount of money that the Federal Reserve is pumping into the economy, and this is the, the stimulus. And then you have the other half, which is this interest rate that a lot of people see, whether you're using credit cards or you're using mortgages. Right. Are the two related, or are they on a very separate timeline? The, the new instruments that the Fed has developed and is using have injected something I think is rather unfortunate, uh, and that is that they're really targeting specific markets, the mortgage market and the government securities market. The, the purchases, the massive purchases that they have undertaken in the last couple of years, QE1, 2, and, and 3, have not really been primarily to increase market liquidity and monetary growth. They've impounded two-thirds of all of the liquidity they created as excess reserves at the Federal Reserve by paying banks interest to keep it there. That's, that's more quasi-fiscal policy than it is monetary policy. The, the meeting that Esther was at over in Wyoming, I mean, typically that's a strategy meeting for a lot of the policymakers around the country to, to get together and assess the state of the economy and then determine what needs to be done, I, I guess, towards the end of this year and possibly even into next year. Are you happy with the, the, the timing of what's being said about the tapering sometime starting next year and possibly as early as even late this year and, and this interest rates and all this stuff that's happening? Are you happy with it? Let me break that question in, in, in two. Uh, one, I think interest rates have been far too low for far too long, so I'm not happy with the thrust of policy in the last couple of years, although I think policy was outstanding in uh, 2008 uh, when there was a liquidity crunch with uh, Lehman Brothers collapse and so on. So I think the Fed did a tremendous job then, but has, has kept the foot on the th throttle too, too long. Um, on, on the other half of the question, the Fed has never been as transparent. Bernanke has uh, introduced forward uh, signaling, or what's the proper term, uh, for forward guidance. Uh, I think that's a very good thing. And even with all of that, with even all of the information that the market is being given, they hang on every word. Uh, nobody has a clear sense you know, of when it's going to turn. So there's still enormous uncertainty. And I think it's inherent in the kind of fiat money monetary policy we have. I think they do the best they can in a way. But it's really an impossible I, I remember the days, and you do too, when Alan Greenspan used to come in yes. with the briefcase, and we would, of course, speculate on what he's going to do by the size of the briefcase. Right. Um, but I want to talk to you more about interest rates, the mortgage market, the housing market. It's yeah. all gotten better in the U.S. Yes. E everybody will say the same thing. But rates have already started going up. The Fed doesn't have to do anything because interest rates, at least at the market level, have right. started to rise. And some people in the housing market are saying that it's going to affect housing. Do you worry about that? I worry that the housing bubble has already been, or the process of reflating it has already gotten underway and is potentially dangerous. I'm not worried about interest rates slowly and gradually moving back up. I'm worried about them staying low. I mean, it's inevitable that if you pay you know, 2% or 3% for a mortgage, the public will overinvest in the housing stock, and that's not a healthy thing in the long run. You were with the IMF. Christine Lagarde was also at this meeting as well. And I don't recall a time when the head of the IMFs and their comments was so important at this meeting. She was there. She, I'm sure she likely talked about the emerging markets and the impact it would have on other countries. Yes. Walk us through how much is the Fed listening and how much of an impact would she have at these meetings? It's a very interesting question because the Federal Reserve has always been criticized uh, for paying too little attention to the impact of its policy on the rest of the world. It looks at what it needs to do and, and go, goes forward. 
And that's largely true, but in the midst of the, the real crunch of two or three years ago, there was a great deal of cooperation between the Federal Reserve, ECB, Bank of England, and others with currency swaps and other coordinated uh, policies to inject dollar liquidity into the market. So, you know, there's a degree of cooperation, but it's not nearly what it should be. And the IMF's job, in part, is to sensitize the Federal Reserve and other major central banks to the importance of coordinating their policies with other major players. I thought it was just a simple question, Warren Coates. Ah. Thank you very much for coming. Always good to have you on the show here.